Hey folks, it's Friday night and uh, I'm going to try to do a video, okay? I just come home, still have the same sweater on, but I change clothes, folks. It's winter, you know, so there's no point in changing a lot of clothes and making unnecessary laundry. I'm kind of neurotic, ain't I? <laughs> um, the way that I talk and notice things and say something right away. Just got home from uh, band practice. I am currently... Um, in six active bands that doesn't mean that we're all playing all the time but that they're active the projects are active and um three of the bands have been active in the last few months playing and one of them is the punk rock band that i'm in called raf back in the 80s we put out this actually rather sought after punk rock tape called these days of tears and uh we just this we had been getting together the last few years for these reunion, punk rock reunions that have been happening in Omaha, and we just decided that it's just too good to, let's just get back together. So tonight we had our first songwriting session um, as a band, and the first one in, man, almost, shit, 30 years would it be? <laughs> and it rocked. We, we knocked out two, two preliminary songs. We recorded them got to get the lyrics together but we got the basic arrangements and uh, it was exciting so that's where I'm coming from that's the the initial energy that's on my plate but I'm here to talk about music um, I may digress thank you folks thank you I got your um, your comments thank you but I had mentioned a couple of videos ago that I would be the way that I can get records right now is to trade I just don't have any money so I'd had a little pile built up and I took them and traded at Almost Music today and got, I think, four good records. Four good records. I'll show them to you. One of the records that I traded was the uh, the uh, XTC that Martin Manning had given me. And uh, I had to explain to, to Brad that I had double of them because it's like he was wondering, this doesn't look right. You know, Higgins bringing an XTC. <laughs> no, no. XTC is a keeper. I had two. But um, great visit with Brad. That he had a lot of stuff that I wanted. Last time I was there, there wasn't much, and this time there was too much. So it was hard to choose. This is what I got. I collect Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention. So here's one that I needed. Uh, <laughs> them or us. I had to look at it. To them or us. Double album on Barking Pumpkin around 1985-86. I think part of this is live, and there's a lot of doo wop stuff on here, but I've already listened to the whole thing, and I just love Zappa and his guitar playing in particular. Really happy to add this to the collection. They also... I also picked up... Brian Eno, Carl Hyde, Someday World, and... I collect Eno. It's not so much that I'm really not... I'm not knocked out about this album, actually. Matter of fact, I got into a long discussion on my Facebook page today with people where I just went ahead and asserted my album, Murphy, is better than this. You know, got into it um, with one person who doesn't agree, and it's a little bit of kickback. I think it's a person that had sent me some music that I wasn't impressed with, said so, and so now it's their turn to get me back, eh? I think that's really what it was, you know. But regardless, my music, you know, some people don't like it, but I'm saying firmly, my music is fucking good. I make it here in the bedroom, you know. And these guys have hundreds of thousands of dollars of equipment to them. And I love Eno and Carl Hyde from Underworld. But this is, uh, this is good. But I'm going to say it again. I don't I just feel like saying it. My album is way better than this. And this is selling thousands. And these guys are making a lot of money. And I'm starving. I'm working on getting... I'm working on improving my hustle. But God damn it, you know. It's like my music is good. I don't have the money for promotion. I don't have the backing to get it into people's face. If, people, if, if it was in people's faces. And if they saw ads, they'd be buying it. I just I listened to a couple things today, and this, you know, that are major releases, and it's like my music is better than that, just the way it is. I'm kind of getting um, 
I gotta get my dander up because it's like I gotta survive, and it's like people. The whole Kanye West thing kind of fits into this. That guy, it's not that Kanye isn't um, talented, but look at how he gets all this attention by being such an ass, you know, and such a braggart. And I'm not an ass or a braggart, you know. That's part of me, but that's not the part that I want to put forward. But damn it, I need some of that money. All this money people are giving Kanye West and his big bootied wife. For nothing, give me that money. Buy my records. That's what I want to say. Okay, real happy to get this. Don Caballero's third album, What Burns Never Returns. Instrumental, I don't know, you, you can call it math rock if you want. To me, this is close to jazz. Uh, Damon Che is a very interesting drummer. Very good. Saw these guys once and uh, really tried hard to have a conversation with Damon. And he w he just didn't want to have a straight conversation. And I just had too much trouble trying to f follow his... Seemed tangential to me, but I'm certain in his mind he made it complete sense. And I just couldn't follow him. But they kicked my butt in the, in in the concert, and so I have some other Don Caballeros, but I wanted this and this. I got this today, so I got that. The Zappa. I think I got one. Is it one more? Two more. So I got Don Caballero, Frank Zappa, Carl Hyde. Yes, and one more. I got. And this one I got, it's, uh, I like stuff like this. The music is kind of on the light pop side, but I just love it when I can find records like this. Kind of obscure records from different countries. Metro. And the guy behind this band is apparently a fairly big star. I think this is from Hungary. Stevenovity Zoran is the guy's name. I looked him up. He's got a bunch of records. But what's cool about this is that it's pop, but it has little sound effects and little uh, nods to psychedelia. You know, just like you see on the cover here, which at this point, in a, in a nostalgic way, is just enough to make this desirable for me. And it wasn't, it wasn't, it's not an expensive collector's item, so I could afford it. And so I got this Metro. I believe this is out of Hungary. So those are the four records that I um, got in my trades today. Very happy with them. I had a great conversation with Brad Smith, who runs the store. And uh, so I have some more records sitting out. I've been interacting on uh, Facebook a lot. Um, the cold weather has something to do with it. And to me also, the climate, the social climate of the world right now has something to do with it. Right now, I'd just rather do what I have to do in the world and come back home because the world feels crazy to me, you know, psychically, you know. Um, I love people, but, you know, being out in public, like I had to go to, to the store tonight and I, uh, I don't go to Walmart, but I did tonight because of, it was on the way. And going there just showed me why I don't go. This Walmart is destroying America. You know what I'm saying? It is. And the and and the the, the stores are they suck. And the atmosphere. That's what I'm trying to get at. It's like the the rooms and houses and places have atmosphere. You know. You, some of you know what I'm talking about. And the ambience of of the Walmart was was really yucky. It's like, I couldn't wait to get out of there. Okay. Here's some records that I just played. Kayak. Royal Bed Bouncer. Dutch Band. They don't get talked about much when they talk about Prague because they're a little more on... These guys are a little more on the pop side of Prague, but this is excellent. Tan Scherpenzeel on keyboards. Love this album. Royal Bed Bouncer. Keyboards and great harmonies. Great band. Great band. What else have I played here? Okay. This one got some interesting comments. Jazz. Free jazz. You could call it spiritual jazz. But it's not one of those grail records that people are looking for. 
Friendship Next of Kin featuring Selwyn Lissick. Facets of the Universe. Now, I don't know if this person, I won't say his name, but if he happens to watch this video, you'll know who I'm talking about. But a recent scholarly, this person does know a lot about music, who joined one of the secret groups I posted this in, made a comment to the, to the effect that, well, this isn't known, this is probably one of those albums where everybody's playing and no one's listening, right? And I said, wrong, this is good. Mongizi Faza on trumpet, African guy you don't hear too much from. I mean, well, you do. Kenneth Tarode, this is really good. The deal is it's not known about somebody didn't listen. Someone probably, the critic or critics who got copies of this to, to, to review or whatever. I know how it happens. I used to do reviews, you know. You know, it caught them on the wrong day or they didn't see enough names or something. And so it fell by the wayside. But I'm telling you folks that like jazz and free jazz, spiritual jazz, this is really good. Mongizi Faza, the trumpeter. His solo's on here. If you get a chance to hear this, check back with me. The so trumpet solos are highlights of this. This is good. You know, I have as much attitude as anybody else. But I'm at the point where now where I just really realize that we're all just in our heads. So nobody else's attitude is, is going to overrule mine in my space. It's just what we think. My thoughts are not more important than yours, but your thoughts are not more important than mine. So people are trying to come along with the usual stuff. And this happens, you know, because we're human. We get hurt and upset by people things, things people say. But I keep remembering, I just have to keep reminding myself, it's just the world in their head. You know, I don't live in their head. I live in my head. Burning the Wailers. Again, was brought up uh, online, and I pulled it, played the whole album. The words to Bob Marley's songs are just words to live by. I was listening in particular to Pass It On. Chris Cole, Astral Traveler 68, had sent me a message. So, you know, uh, had the song in mind, and so I put the whole album on. Fantastic, the Wailers. Been in a John Coltrane mood and a John Coltrane sonship. Yesterday on my Facebook page, and I will make a connection because some of you people follow me in both places. I had posted a picture, was it yesterday? I think it was, and got into a conversation about Coltrane and then brought up the fact that my dad actually knew him. For a long time, throughout my early adult years, I never brought up the memory because I thought it was. Once I figured out as an adult who John Coltrane was in relation to my life, I was thinking, that couldn't have really happened, but it did. And what's cool is my older brother, who I'm reconnecting now with long distance, a whole other story, we've been estranged. But he posted on Facebook some things that I didn't know about that had happened that confirmed, yeah, they were friends, you know. And my dad had received a, a letter from Alice Coltrane, um, letting him know personally about my dad's, about John's passing. So the story of me meeting John Coltrane as a little boy and having him bounce me on his knee, you know, because I just love records so much. And I was hanging out with him and my dad while they played records. That really happened. Sonship, this is a really fantastic John Coltrane album. I posted it today and a few folks said that they like this even better than A Love Supreme. I understand what they say. This is very fiery. A Love Supreme is like a, like a, almost like an ankh. It's like this totem, you know, and it represents a lot. But some of the other John Coltrane's other albums are actually much more uh, fiery. This is one, Sonship. I also played Coltrane live at the Village Vanguard again with his wife, Alice Coltrane. Folks were getting a big kick out of looking at the folks' dress on the cover, but man, you know, that's real life. You know, jazz musicians have always been on the lower end of the economic totem pole. So the brother in the shorts and the white socks, well, he's got no reason to front. He ain't got no money, but he can sure play his ass off. This is a great album. This is sitting out to play. Um, Island of Sanity, new music from New York. And it's got some great artists on here. I've had this for a while. And I just said it's time to get re-familiar. David Linton, Mofongo. 
Christian Marclay, Fish and Roses, Skeleton Crew, Charles K. Noyes, Martin B.C. A lot of really good stuff on this album. I'll be digging into this a little bit later. Excellent. Masabumi Kikuchi from Japan, Susto. A lot of his albums are extremely rare and hard to find. This is the only one I can get because this, this was the, the, the one that got put out for mainstream consumption in America. Susto, this is like a Miles Davis album. This is incredibly good, like an electric Miles Davis. Um, folks that have heard it, I po someone else posted it yesterday, then I posted mine, and we just got to, yeah, yeah, this is unknown. This is badass. Masabumi Kikuchi. Susto. This is in the tradition of electric miles, and they get it right. Fantastic album. Some more jazz. Anthony Tony Williams, Lifetime. Early album of his. You know, he was doing this stuff when he was still a teenager, you know. Now this one I hardly got to, to drop the needle on it, so I have to come back to this before I talk about it. But I've had this forever, and this is excellent. Herbie Hancock, Gary Peacock, Bobby Hutcherson, get out of here. Excuse me. Another band that is like a drug for me when I listen to them. It's hard to just listen to one record. You know, it goes into another. And last night I was listening to Porcupine Tree. And I started with Dead Wing. And this is my favorite. Probably this is my favorite Porcupine Tree album, Dead Wing. Um, I play this um, probably more than any of their other albums. This is the limited edition on Blue. Their records are very collectible. This is uh, on Blue Vinyl. And um, it's just a dynamite album. Prog metal. And it's not metal. It's got those things in it. And then I played Light Bulb Sun. This is also in a limited edition. This is on white marble vinyl. Russia on Ice is the track off of this. People have asked me, why don't I do podcasts? Podcasts don't it's, it interest me that much. I've done a couple of mixtapes. And I'm on Mixcloud, so I have some on it, but it doesn't excite me. This is more fun to talk to you. Porcupine Tree, like this. You know, if, 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 if we could do this live somehow, that could be interesting. And it could be dangerous. MPB4 Quarteto MC out of Brazil. This was a gift. Cobra de Vidro. I believe is how you say the title of this album. And this is not a beat-oriented album. A lot of folks are, seem to always be mining for beats and breaks, which makes, you know, that's fine, but that has nothing to do with why I listen to music. Um, this is beautiful. And they do the Beatles Because on here. Wonderful, wonderful version. Now, I wasn't putting down beats, but what I'm kind of saying by saying it like that is that you know, there is an element of beat making, beat searching for, and looping that is kind of like a, the crowd follows the leader, you know, sort of thing. It's like, oh, this is cool, so I'll do it. Now, I don't know if that's necessarily true, but that's how it kind of comes off. It's like, you know, oh, this has got this, this hip break and this hate, you know, and I guess all I'm saying is that I've always been listening to music, you know, and I'm not following any hipster shit, okay? Not to say that beats are just hipster. Some of you understand what I'm trying, what I'm getting at, right? Some of you don't, and if, and if it insulted you, then that's not what I meant, okay? <laughs> if somehow what I said gave you a, uh, it's not meant, okay, to upset anyone. I'm not dissing people that dig for breaks. The Legendary Pink Dots, The Lovers. Very interesting band, led by Mr. Edward Caspell. They've made a lot of records. The music is, at times, very dark and imaginative, and then at other times very whimsical and fantasy-like, and then other times like this, it's a mixture and intimate. A really excellent band, The Legendary Pink Dots, The Lovers. I used to have a dedicated um, 
uh, collection of them and sold a bunch. And I, I do regret it. I regret it. I don't remember who gave this to me. This was another VCLT years ago. Galeshka Moravia. Didn't know anything about this. Solo piano. And this is really good. I can see where maybe private press, if you heard a little bit of it at the first, you would be put off because it starts off not really chaotic, but kind of like this person is trying to get somewhere by doing a repetitive thing and it's kind of intense. He gets there, but he asks a lot of you at first, you know, to go there with him. But this is really something. Galeshka Moravioff. And whoever sent it to me, thank you. These next two albums, to really enjoy the full uh, extent of what this music has to offer, I would need to speak German. I can just understand a little bit of German, so I get that there's a lot of comedy on these records. But the way that it's set up, musically and voice-wise and sound effects-wise, I really enjoy these albums. E-Rock. And I think he was the drummer in either Grobschnitt or Birth Control. This is on Brain, Green Brain. It's not a first one run brain. First run green brains have metronome underneath uh, the brain on the label. I'll show this to you. It really doesn't make that big of a difference to me, but to collectors, you know, that's where the value goes up. I do pay attention to value. I think about that, you know, not so much for me, but who gets my records, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't want to sell these. I, I would like to leave these to my family somehow, my nephews or somebody. But that's the brain label. And the original brains had the word metronome underneath the word brain. But um, Eloy, I mean not Eloy, but E-Rock, drummer. And uh, this, is, this is fun stuff. And, and what's nice is that either both of these albums or one of them, they end really spacey. They go into the space thing. Really excellent. This is the second album, Zwei, or E-Rock Zwei, or Zwei, however you say it. Another one on Green Brain. Love that stuff. Haven't played it, but I bought, got this out because, again, it was being talked about online. Um, Lewis and B.B. Barron's soundtrack to Forbidden Planet. And this was one of the first electronically um, based scores for a movie. Uh, if you've ever seen the movie, you'll remember the music. This is the first... The, this was originally put out in a run of, I think, either 1,500 or 2,500 numbered copies. The next, the next run, which came out the same year, 1978, this is one. This is an original, okay? There's been a few reissues since then. But this is the first reissue after the hand-numbered ones. Another legendary Pink Dots album, Brighter Now. Excellent. Psychedelic, you know, in, a, in their own way. Argent, the band that had the big hit Hold Your Head Up back in the 70s. This is an album that they made called Counterpoints. More proggy. And as a matter of fact, Phil Collins plays drums on this, and it's very noticeable on the drum on the tracks where Phil plays the way that Phil is tr is credited on the album is that they credit their regular drummer um, Robert Henrit and then they say underneath thanks to Phil Collins who played drums and percussion while Robert was ill as though we wouldn't be able to tell the difference it's real obvious when Phil Phil Collins is playing drums on this that badass mother this is an uneven album but if you like Prague and you kind of like Argent, I recommend this. Weird cover. I don't like that cover. Good album. Another Argent, I haven't played it. I brought. I just grabbed them and I haven't played it yet. Nexus. It's been a long time. I do remember that this one is not as good as Counterpoints. I'm talking online about Canterbury music again. And here's a Canterbury, not a Canterbury group, but there's a they touch on that flavor. However, and this is the first album, Sudden Dusk, and apparently these folks kind of know David Newhouse from the Muffins. And this is their second album, however, Calling. I like the cover better than the album. This is the one. 
but both albums are very different, really well played. Like chamber music, really. Like chamber music. Okay, what else here? Steve Hubbock. This is something that I was able to acquire years ago, uh, probably in a used bin. Looked interesting. It was on the Dossier label, which I discovered was kind of an experimental label. And this is good. It's, per it's percussion-based pieces. And there's a similarity to a percussionist that I'm aware of from industrial music called Zev. Any of, some of you folks might have heard of Zev. It's in that vein of percussion attack in some ways, okay? This isn't quite industrial, but some of you will know what I mean when I say the, the name Zev. Steve Hubbock, this is good. I keep my hula records, but I never play them, so I said, okay, play this. You know, is it is it as derivative as when I remembered it, but derivative in, in the way that I like, so I keep it. And it actually ended up sounding much better, thank goodness. Hula, Black Wall Blue. This is a 12-inch single by Hula. UK band, um, definitely doing a Cabaret Voltaire type of approach to sampling and beat. And I think that's probably what took away from my initial um, appreciation of the band is that you know, you, you can hear where they're following in someone's footsteps, but the more ambient track on this was really good. So I'm glad I, I have like two or three other albums or records by Hula. So if you see these records like in the dollar bin and you're interested in adventurous stuff, buy it. Black Wall Blue. You know, on the last video, someone left a comment in relation to me talking about the band Space Opera. And they brought up Ozark Mountain Devil, Daredevils. You know, and I'm very familiar with the band. And the main reason why I don't talk about bands that are like really well-known like that, except for the ones that I really like, is because there's no need for me to. You know, I'm telling a lot of you about music you've never heard about by telling you about these bands. So, yeah, Ozark Mountain De Daredevils were good. Yeah, they were. Here's another one sitting out that is in the to-play pile, but I'll show it now. Michael Howell. In the silence, guitarist. Let me see if I played any more. Oh, okay, yeah. V effect. Stop those songs. Fred Frith of Henry Cow is a guest on here. Angular, jagged, uh, propulsive uh, compositions. Great ensemble playing. The people in this band can really play. I wouldn't be surprised if this music was written out. If you're into the rock and opposition, Canterbury, progressive, if you're interested in any of that, you, you will like this album. Stop those songs, V Effect. This is really good. Caetano Veloso. Man, I wish I had more music from all over parts of the world. But Brazilian, this man went to jail for his music. You know what I mean? He he's a you know, he's a hero, you know. He's someone who stood up to um, corrupt authority, you know, back in the 60s and 70s in Brazil, you know, where I don't even remember the whole story, you know, and they deported him for years, along with Gilberto Gil. This is fantastic music. This album here, Velo, is kind of a, a mixture of him adding some new wave elements to Brazilian music. Wish I had more um, Brazilian music especially by Caetano Veloso. I do have some, but not nearly what I'd like. Solid Gold Cadillac, Mike Westbrook. UK jazz. He gets associated with the jazzers from the UK, but he's a composer. And this is actually an interesting album. I don't quite get... I don't pay attention to the words that much. It's like it's, there's a subtle concept to it. So there's kind of this, there's some doo y rock and roll mixed in with this free jazz and ambient jazz on here. This is a weird album. It's really good. Solid Gold Cadillac. A 
a reissue, reissue of this very cool album, Circus. Mel Collins, who plays um, s horns and came to prominence um, through King, his playing in King Crimson, but also being like the session man for all Canterbury. He's on a lot of ca Caravan albums, you name it. Uh, Camel, he's played with everybody, but this is one of his early bands, Circus. And this is really, really good. This is a reissue on Get Back. Uh, originals of this are very collectible. And when you listen to the album, you can see why. It's not hype. This is just really a cool, cool album. They do um, Monday Monday, of all things, by the Mamas and Papas. And they really do it, do something with it. Dysrhythmia. I had this album for years and and didn't even know until years later that Gavin Harrison from Porcupine Tree was the drummer on here. When I first bought this, the only person that I knew, the people I knew on here were Jocko Jaczyk and Danny Thompson. At the time that I bought this, I didn't even know who the hell Je um, Gavin Harrison was. I knew who Pandit, Pandit Dinesh was. So... It's interesting how when I went back to this uh, a while back and pulled it, what, Gavin Harrison is in this? So I gave it a fresh listen. This album is not uh, fully, uh, it, 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 I don't think they completely realized what they were going after. Because there's a freshness to it, it's, it's um, the compositions are trying to be it's kind of, there's some trying here as opposed to really getting it down, getting it right. But, um, this is another one. I would recommend this over a lot of stuff that people automatically go for when they go looking for records. If you saw this and you're, I'll repeat it. You're looking for something different and your ears are open. Get this. Because this is the sort of thing that you can find for a dollar too. Because nobody wants it. And yet if you listen to it, it, it's, it is good. It's just some songs here, kind of like, it's like, okay, okay, all right, that's enough. Let's see what else, okay? You know what I mean? Rotor Connection, Minnie Ripperton, the woman that passed away way too young. She had that big hit with uh, Loving You with the real high voice. She was in this band, Rotary Connection, out of Chicago. And I played this, uh, this is fantastic. Some of this stuff sounds way better now than it did when I was a kid. It's like some of the things that they were trying were like just, oh, I didn't get it. You know, Charles Stepney, the arranger behind a lot of this and a lot of stuff on Chess and Checker Records. Man was a genius. Great picture on the back of the band. That's Minnie Ripperton passing a joint to another one of the band members. And I think that catches me up. It does. So... It's nighttime, so that's why I'm allowing this to go. It does mean something to me. I appreciate the fact that it, you folks want to spend some time in in my space. You know, I appreciate Jenny, Jen. I mean, it's, it's great that you're still with me. You know, yeah, we, it's great that you're with me. Long, long distance friend that I have never met, but is in my heart. Um, all of you, the folks that don't comment very often, but when you do, you know, thank you. Uh, I will end this up like I have been ending up my videos by kind of contemplating more things because folks, we, this is an interesting time of the planet. If you even look back at how things were going in the nineties or even the early two thousands, where the planet is right now in 2015 is different. It's not all bad, but there's a lot of chaos, which isn't necessarily bad, but it's it's not good. You know, it's not benevolent. And it's part of my nature to just speak about it. You know, when I was a, a little boy, everyone said, you're going to be a preacher, you know. Well, I am a preacher, you know. My experience with the church 
made me run as quick as I could in the opposite direction. You know, once I, you know, had, you know, started to go down the path of becoming, you know, a minister, you know, it's like, oh, hell no. But the way that I conduct myself here is that's basically it. Is like, you know, I, I, I talk, I want to be heard. I, I feel like I have something to say. We all do, but I want you to hear it, you know. And one of the things that is important in what I have to say has to do with the human connection. It has to do with the drama of life that's ongoing. And I feel that it can be helpful to give my two cents. So, for example, listening to the news and right now, the politics as they're ramping up for next year and as they're trying desperately to make people think that we need to um, go and die, you know, you know, over something that is none of our business, I just, you know, it's insane, you know, at this point. I listen. I listen to just what Barack is saying, you know. I listen to McCain. Oh, my God, you know. And everyone's trying to justify it, and it's it's madness because this is my point of view, and it's just my point of view, but I feel this strongly. If these people actually gave a damn, they would stop this charade. Now, I know that that is really not possible because everything is connected, and we've got this great creaking ship of commerce worldwide going and you just can't stop everything because it's fucked up and changed like that I know that but the people who really need and I will put it on them that need to be going in that direction are not even approaching it so far away from it you know and then and then when I talk to people that I know who are still connected um, politically etc Recently, a woman said to me, I won't say what her position is, high up in the government, well, the, well, well Derek, you you understand these things take time. And I had to bite my tongue, because the thing is, that's bullshit. It, it does take time, but you, what you're doing is, you're milking it for all you can get, because you're thinking about your own ass first. Maybe I would too if I was in their position, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not, and so that's why I'm in this position saying this. Hey, you people that are jacking around and you none of you look like you know what you're doing not a one of the world's leaders impresses me not a one they all look like buffoons to me playing this game of politics and and global economics playing a game with people's lives just laying waste to the planet why do you think there's so much focus on, on Mars? I can't prove it, but I know it. That the whole idea is escape plan for the elite. Well, we'll just jump ship on this motherfucker, you know, or all those bunkers that I've never been to down below, but there's it's been shown. We were, you know, it's it's there's you know, this is not talk, it's there. All these underground cities, you know you know, for the president, but actually, you know, for it, whoever can pay, you know that's, if you don't know that now, I'm telling you, that's where it's at. The only thing that's moving is the money. The only thing that's moving is the money. And that gets to me, because here I am just being an honest guy. I care about people. I try to make honest art. I try to be honest. And it's all I can do is just sell some records. I, you know, I can't afford the machine, you know. But if I can afford the machine of commercialism and stuff that people would know about me, you know. And I could make a living instead of living like I am, you know. Can of soup, you know, and eating nuts and a little bit of yogurt, you know. And this is how I'm living. I don't eat a meal every day. I'm not complaining because I know a lot of you guys are too, okay. I'm telling it like it is. That's why I get angry. Because we're living like this, and there's a small group of very undeserving people living high off this motherfucking hog. You know what I'm saying? It's always been like this, you know? It has been like this for a long time. It's not right. It's not right. It's not right. 
that's not right. And um, maybe it is a waste of time, but it's something that I can do, and so I do it. I talk about it, I say what I'm thinking. Something will give eventually. I'll, pro I'll be long gone before that happens, but besides talking here, I do and have since my teenagers years i've been active civil civil rights contacting legislators going down to the capitol following all the rules and that's why i get so mad because as a, as a black man i have experienced it over and over again that the lion the liars of society say well follow the rules and everything will go fine that's a fucking lie especially for minorities i follow all the rules and i'm still i follow all the rules I've assimilated. I, you know, I talk more like a honky than a black man because of the how I had to growing up in the '60s. You know, trying to, you know, hold your the only lipstick out too much. Watch that, light, you, you know, talk proper. You know, the whole idea of black people trying to get ahead in society, and it was all a goddamn lie. Follow the rules, and everything will work out for you. It's a fucking lie. That's why I get like this. And, you folks that don't know it or were never exposed to this, you need to know. And you folks that want to deny it, what the fuck is that about? There's some story in the news where a Muslim couple's child was refused services. I can't remember it. I can't go there. You know what I'm trying to say. A baby needs help and it's refused because of thoughts. Because of thoughts and stupid ass fucking beliefs. Yeah, I do get worked up. And I think that it is important for folk, some of us folks to try to get through where there's all of you people that are trying to get through the day. So it's like, oh, let's have a fun moment. Let's have the cuddly moment. Let's look at some kittens. Let's look at some cute animals, you know. That's fine, but if that's the best you can do, I'm here to kick you in the ass because we got to do better than that. Just soften, trying to soften the blow or to just make the moment seem nicer. We're beyond that, folks. We got to do something. That's why I talk like this. Because we can do something. And it's not anti-rich. It's pro-human. This all for profit and just the small 1% getting more and more and more. That's anti-human. And yet we're still praising these people. You know, and they're still they're getting accolades. And we're playing the, the emperor has no clothes and yet everyone is still pretending he does. That's, I just got to say it over and over again. When it, when it, rises up in my craw, I got to get it out there. Maybe, maybe something can happen good before I die. 